on May 5th uh, in, of 1999, I was diagnosed by Dr. Appel as having ALS. It probably started in 1998 when I first noticed that my legs were fasciculating, particularly my calves. And uh, as time went on, I started becoming more concerned about it. The, the uh, fasciculations had gotten to the point where when I was sitting down, my pants would be moving around because my calves were jumping so much. Uh, I decided to find out what was the matter. I was sent to a neurologist and he sent me to Dr. Appel in Houston in 1999. It was kind of a, a test of elimination of other things to make sure that I didn't have something else that was maybe m uh, mimicking ALS. They tested for Lyme, they, they tested my uh, nerve uh, capacity, how fast my nerves were responding to electrical stimulus. There were a lot of tests. <laughs> the, the, final, the final test was a uh, muscle biopsy, which was uh, quite a painful experience. Uh, and the doctor said that that actually clinched he, uh, the, the diagnosis. The first thing that uh, my then girlfriend, who is now my wife, and uh, my sister uh, helped me to do a whole bunch of research. And, and the internet is a great place to research things. So I looked into a whole lot of things. I uh, expanded on the protocol that Dr. Appel started with high doses of vitamin C. I went to all kinds of uh, antioxidants in high doses and experimented uh, freely with lots of different, uh, lots of different things. I'd have been on malate, uh, anything that would help give your body the building blocks to repair whatever damage was in your brain or in your uh, motor neurons. I take a lot of vitamins. I take probably eight, 10, 12 a day now of various ty types. I change up what I'm taking based on how I feel. Um, that previously, I took mountains of vitamins. I, I was just 30, 40 a day. It was very expensive. The reason I take less now, I think, is because I'm, I'm detoxified or somewhat or less toxic than I was. Detoxification is, is real important. You know, chelation and experimenting with, with things that clean you out because if, you're, uh, if your intestines aren't working properly, then you're not absorbing things the way you should. If you are taking 100 milligrams of one thing and you're not absorbing it, then it's not doing you any good. You don't need to take 4,000 milligrams of something if you can absorb it well. If, if you're not absorbing it well, then you need a lot more. So eat cleanly so that you don't build up more toxins. I learned to read labels. I learned to stay away from MSG and uh, sugar substitutes and, and all of the things that they're putting in, in food that is not good for you. Tell me a little bit about the ALS clinic that you went to. In the ALS clinics, you're, you kind of immerse yourself in a world of the disease. Early on, it was, it was shell shock. I mean, this is a complete new world, and here you are, and here's all these other people that have it too in various stages, and uh, some of them are, you know, not coming back to the next clinic maybe. And, and some of them are still walking around like you are, wondering, you know, what is going on. What do you think about Rylutec? At the clinic, I was given a prescription for Rylutec, which is uh, the approved drug for ALS. Um, I didn't like what I saw in the people that were taking it. They seemed to be very w knocked out. They were zombies, and I, I just, decided not to take it and go natural. 
a woman that was diagnosed at exactly the same time I was with very similar si symptoms. It presents different symptoms, symptomatically differently in different people. Her symptoms and mine were very close. She took the Rylatec and she didn't last but about three years. What worked for me was to deny, defy, you know, rebel, instead of being in that disease mode, you want to fight that d disease mode. In the clinic, you uh, are doing, you know, a lot of different tests and they're uh, checking, you know, how strong this muscle is and how you push and how you pull or uh, how you walk and, and you're becoming more concentrating on how you may be declining instead of thinking about how you are improving to be positive. Uh, the clinics, I, I suppose, you know, have a place, but I no longer go to clinics. I have a standing invitation to go back to a clinic if I wish, but I think I have done better on my own. One of the primary things in, in this whole thing, and, and this started very early in my uh, journey here, is that uh, I program my mind to heal my body. And there's a, there's a logical rationale that follows to that point. You don't have to know how or how a computer works to use it. And your, your mind, your brain is, is very much the same way, or I've come to believe it is. Uh, you program your brain. Uh, we've been programming our brains ever since we were little kids. We have tapes that run in the background all the time. And they really form the basis of your personality to a large degree. Well, get real quiet and talk to your brain. Program it. At first, uh, it was it was very meditative, and very you know wanted to be in a quiet place and and not uh, have any distractions, and uh, it would be you know ten to fifteen minutes of of you know om and and breathe and 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 it doesn't take that anymore. I can do it in in thirty seconds and many times a day. It's just getting back in touch with a tape that you've cut, and, and that becomes like background to your life. When you are going about your daily life, do you try to get back to that place periodically during the day? Yes. Yes, I, I think, it's, I think it's, uh, it's become a part of how I live. I do this six to eight, 15 times a day. It doesn't, ma it, it doesn't have to be any set amount of times. It just becomes part of what you do. I continued to go down even with a lot of supplementation. At one point in time, my uh, wife and I uh, counted my fasciculations and I was around 600 fasciculations per minute in my whole body. We did it by quarters. Uh, or quadrants and for a specific amount of time and then added them all together because that's you know they were all going on at the same time so if you just think about one leg and then think about another leg and then and try to count them sometimes they're, they're going so much you can't count them. My sister was probably primary in uh, research on dental amalgams and heavy metals uh, mercury toxicity. Uh, she had uh, looked into that and passed the information along to me and I, th I thought about it. I had cavities filled when I was a kid and uh, I think actually about the time that I got rid of all of my fillings I started feeling better. Probably the 2006-7 uh, time frame was uh, probably the lowest low point. So you had to have a little faith 
because you kept taking all these supplements from 99 to 2006, yet... I was still going down. I'm very stubborn. <laughs> and, and it was going slowly. I, I was progressing slowly. So uh, you know, that made me think, at least I'm slowing it down. Did you ever lose faith? There's times you get down. I, I, don't, I don't think that um, being down is losing faith. Uh, what are the alternatives? I mean, you've got to keep going. So, you know, if you're down, you're down. Get back up again. Did you believe you were going to beat it? There's the bravado thing of, yes, I'm going to beat this. And uh, I hope everybody has that, no matter what they're diagnosed with. And yes, I guess I really did believe it because I am. I am beating it. Did you ever have doubts? I, I think there's doubts involved in everything. I, I think the best way to deal with doubts is through logic. Just talk yourself out of the doubt that there's always a way. How important do you think positive mental attitude is? I think positive mental attitude is probably more important than anything you can take. Uh, you need to have the building blocks and the supplements and everything, of course. But without a positive mental attitude, they won't do you any good. From your experience, have you felt that having negative versus positive emotions makes a difference? Uh, negative emotions, you'll find yourself, no matter how positive you're trying to be, uh, you'll have some negative emotions. You're uh, irritated, mad, um, not just irritated, angry. Um, and and I, I, that's normal. That's, that's natural. Um, and you get past that you have to get back to that positive place if you want to if you want to beat it if you want to get progress if you want to get your function back you have to be positive give us a few of the vitamins that you have consistently taken well constants uh, are uh, high value antioxidants and those change uh, I, i'll take astaxanthin or uh, uh, High dose vitamin C, um, uh, and alginol is a seaweed based antioxidant that I take. I take magnesium every day. I've tried several, quite several, many forms of magnesium. Have you ever used transdermal magnesium? I have uh, the uh, magnesium oil that I use, and sometimes. Uh, in specific areas, we'll put uh, some DMSO on top of the magnesium oil so that it transfers in more quickly. Melatonin at night is, is pretty much a constant. I'll, I'll take a, a, a one mag, a milligram of me, uh, melatonin at night, and that's a, that's a good antioxidant. Um, also helps you sleep, calms your legs down a little bit, and, you know, because when you sit and be quiet, is when you notice the fasciculations the most. And uh, it's, it's interesting to learn to ignore all of that. Your whole body is moving around and you can ignore it. Tell us about the Rife machine. I have uh, experimented also with the Rife machine. I did use it on detoxification mode for uh, several weeks. So I, you know, I feel like it's helped, but it's hard to quantify things. You just keep going. Research what is good for anything that has to do with your nerves. What your nerves need, uh, the different types of oils, uh, fish oils, uh, the lecithin type oils. I think the willingness to experiment is more important than actually what you experiment with because you're going to touch on so many different things when you're out there researching what is available you'll run across things and say oh, i'll try that how much did you go on feel or intuition on whether or not you decided to try something 
I, I think a lot of it is intuitive, where you're reading about something and you say, well, that sounds kind of logical. Maybe that, I'll give that a try. You know, it's only $30 a bottle. I'll try a bottle of it. And, and uh, it's, I don't know, it's just a mode that I'm in. Uh, I'm, I'm willing to experiment. After the diagnosis, how was it telling your family? That, that was very difficult because uh, I had, at that point, not done any research. It was a tough thing. You know, to be told, you know, that you have this terrible thing. And then you've got to go tell other people about it. And that, you know, your parents and your kids and, and stuff like that. And that's, I think that's tougher than getting a diagnosis. Tell us a little bit about the support of family and friends. The support I got from my friends was, was critical. Um, my boss told me to go fishing if I wanted to. Um, my girlfriend, who's now my wife, uh, helped tremendously uh, with uh, research and, and moral support. Uh, she was there for me all the way. My sister, uh, very much, very supportive, uh, provided a lot of research for supplementation and uh, minerals and herbs and everything. So. Uh, having people around you that are supportive and and particularly in uh, a determination to beat it is that's critical at my worst i was using a cane and had to concentrate on on walking now i'm walking much better and i and and i actually i feel a lot better and um i can walk i can drive i can eat I swallow, I still bite my tongue, I still bite my lip, but uh, I'm the, just much better than, than I was. I was uh, surprised to find that I can't swim. I jumped in a pool <laughs> and, and that they just like, that motion is gone. Whatever controls that swinging your arms over your head motion and, and pushing against the water, you know, to, to go forward just isn't there anymore. And so I bounced up and down off the bottom of the pool till I got to the side and got out and walked away. <laughs> As a carpenter, um, you find yourself working over your head a lot, you know, and I can hold my arms up for so long and then that's it. It just doesn't, uh, doesn't work that way anymore. I uh, still have fasciculations. Um, sometimes they're Worse than other times, I uh, uh, I kind of use that as a, a as a gauge on on what I'm taking supplementally, and uh, you know if they start getting really bad, I start upping the dose again. Um, I I don't swing a golf club to where it's effective. <laughs> I could probably swing it, but it may not may not work, so I can't play golf. Uh, I never was a really big golfer, but I did enjoy some whacking the balls around a little bit. I still have some, some holes or, or, or channels in, in my muscles, in my forearms, and, and in my shoulder, and uh, in the back of my calf that I've noticed, and, and some places, you know, like in a thigh right here, there's a little place, looks like something's missing, maybe. Uh, I never had severe muscle wasting. I have muscle uh, tension, I guess. I, I'm, I'm not sure what you would call it. It's uh, where strings within muscle groups have tightened to the point where it, oh, it's almost like a, a guitar string or something in there. It just doesn't, doesn't ever relax. I still have um, the, the emotional instability that comes with this disease. I, uh, um, I don't necessarily see that as, as a bad thing. It's, it's embarrassing sometimes, but uh, I, I just tend to be emotional. Where would you be if you hadn't done all of these things? I'm not sure that I'd even be here if I had not done the aggressive supplementation and experimentation and positive uh, mental imaging and brain programming that I did. Tell us about your quality of life right now. My quality of life right now is very good. 
I uh, enjoy working in the shop. I play guitar, I enjoy that. And, and I actually make a conscious effort to enjoy life at whatever I'm doing, whether it's just listening to the wind in the trees or uh, out in the garden or uh, just whatever I'm doing, I just try to enjoy it. What advice would you give to neurologists? Look into nutritional uh, support. Look into um, the detoxification protocols. Look into getting rid of uh, mercury, mercury toxicity. Look into the mind of the patient. Allow them to heal themselves. What advice would you give to someone just diagnosed with ALS? Detoxify. Clean up your diet. Experiment widely. Research what you experiment, of course, and, and uh, supplement. Give your body the building blocks that it needs to heal and then direct your body to heal. Can you sit alone without doing anything? Can you let your mind wander and listen to it sing? Do you know that song from so long ago? Do you remember the words or even how it goes? Well, it was something about a warm summer night. And it was something about the time of our life. And it was something about a dream and something about a scheme. And it was something about how it all turns out just like it was meant to be. So I sit alone without doing anything and I let my mind wander and I listen to it sing. I know that song from so long ago. I can't remember the words, but I know how it goes. It was something about a warm summer night. And it was something about the time of our life. And it was something about a dream and something about a scheme. And it was something about how it all turns out just like it was meant to be. Now we sit alone without doing anything and we let our minds wander and we listen to them say we know that song from so long ago can't remember the words, but we know how it goes.